All right, this is Cameron Chambers here in Pro Cycling with Casey Norton. And uh, here today, I uh, want to let Casey share his story a little bit. Um, uh, Casey, why don't you kind of just take it from the beginning and, and tell me a little bit about um, kind of your, your past and your history and, and uh, how you ended up with a pacemaker in you and, uh, and kind of give, give me the rundown on that. Man, I thought this was a totally different interview. <laughs> um, cool, thanks. Um, thanks for even having me. This is cool. I'm pretty excited. I feel honored to be here. Just feel like I'm a kid who rides this bike. Nothing special. But uh, yeah, um, from the start, I had open heart surgery when I was a kid and a full zipper. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think of what other things to say. Yeah. I get nervous in front of the camera. That's all good. Um, yeah, so uh, right from the start, I had transposition of the great vessels, so my pulmonary and aorta are switched. Okay. Uh, and this is something the doctor knew, like, straight away you were born, and yeah, it was, it was obvious blue. there was an issue. Yeah, um, right from the start, there's, like, four out of five things. Like, I was late, I was big, I was firstborn, I was male. Okay. Uh, there's a bunch of, you know, red flags, and sure enough, it was, it was blue, you know, right as I was born. Okay. And did um, so a quick culture monitor on me, EKG, and yeah, sure enough, there's problems. And uh, I felt so bad for my mom, because, you know, I was her firstborn, and I, I didn't even go home with her. I flew to Portland for oh, wow. open heart surgery, so they're like, well, as soon as you're ready to go, you can leave. And she was like, am I going to take anything with me? Like, my kid. And, uh, wow. yeah, That's she, intense. yeah, she's got a bigger heart than I do. Um, anyway, so, yeah, I went to Portland. Had open heart surgery there at the mustard procedure. Okay. I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I don't know. Uh, it turns out it worked. So um, yeah, it's pretty good. So awesome. Just living life. Thought it'd be good. Are you growing up? Where did you grow up? Well, good question. Um, that all was done in Oregon. Okay. And so then we moved to Colorado when I was pretty young. Okay. And uh, like I said, we just thought it was a fix. Like have the surgery, you're good to go. Okay. Um, come to Colorado, we meet with a pediatric cardiologist, and he was just shocked that there wasn't more going on. Any like, idea what age you were when? It was about six or seven. Okay. And he just so you was, kind of have some memories of this. Like yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I had to get blood drawn because they're putting me on uh, medication for it, you know. Because like I said, you know, my parents, I was there first and, and only with the car problems, so it's just like... Cool, he's done. Like, you change the oil and you get back on the road. Okay. Um, so, you know, they thought it was fixed, but, you know, it, it still needed maintenance. So, I okay. kind of started meeting with uh, Dr. Greensides here when I was about that age. And they did some experimental testing with medicine and how I reacted to it. And, uh, yeah, I just remember being a kid and getting my blood drawn like every week and freaking out. And yeah. Hating that. But, uh, Needles when you're a kid are the worst. Yeah, so. yeah, they were super patient. They're still great. Uh, I still meet with them. It's kind of funny. Uh, yeah, I, I, I wish I'll text you a photo later. But I, I have a photo. I did a 12-hour Red Bull race. Okay. And, and like one of the Angel Fire ones, or in Winter Park. Okay. And and uh, yeah, it was one of those. It's one of the series. Yeah. And uh, ended up winning it, and then. Like, you know, they got the poster and autographed it, and uh -huh. I have a little photo of me, you know, just a little five by seven when I was a kid, and I had, you know, the whole Holter monitor, and I'm on a treadmill <laughs> doing a VO2 test, like, uh -huh. little six-year-old side. It's cool that they, they, they still got it hanging in their office, nice, that it's man. like, that hey, here's this Red Bull race, and this kid won. And it's just <laughs> yeah. like, you were even supposed to do it. Like, we don't want to know what you're doing. And, yeah, it's, it's kind of funny, actually. Uh, there's, there's a good window of years where my cardiologist was like just let's not talk about it are you doing healthy things yeah um did you want me to pause no uh -uh. keep going cool keep going. uh yeah he was just kind of like i don't want to know about mountain biking it sounds dangerous like are you being active yes yeah <laughs> are, you, are you healthy yes do you know your limits yes okay then i'm not gonna ask anymore like just be healthy be safe like we put so much time into you like yeah think of you as my own son, like, don't hurt yourself. So it's just like, yeah, all right, well, I'm just going to not tell you what I'm doing. Yeah. Racing downhill is totally safe. You know, <laughs> right. uh, 
So from like when you were six, you mm -hmm. moved here and you had this meeting to when you were 17, mm -hmm. basically like you knew you had these hard issues, but it was kind of like carry on as normal, yeah. monitor things, and that's kind of what, what was like the doctor's story to you at that time? Like what was their prognosis and outlook for where this was headed? Yeah, good question. Uh, so again, the anatomy that I have with the transposition, uh, I'm kind of on the forefront. I'm one of the older pioneers to say, um, because and if I was born 10 years earlier, they wouldn't even know how to diagnose it, and then probably wouldn't have made it a quarter of what I have already. So, um, you know, equipment and technology is just getting so much better over the six months. Uh, so they caught it early on, they remedied it, um, yeah, the doctors and pediatricians were just kind of like, we're just going to roll the dice here, but ultimately, you know, let's cross our fingers for the 20s. Like, it'd be cool to see him go to college, wow. but we don't know. Damn. Uh, yeah, it was, it was kind of daunting. It's like, well, sweet, I'm going to drive 100 miles an hour everywhere I go, because I'm probably going to die, <laughs> and at least it's on my turn. So. That is a lot for, like, a teenage kid to wrap their head around. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was... Um, yeah, you're just trying to compact everything into your sweet 16. Yeah. Um, but so when did when did bikes kind of become involved? Was this was this in the same yeah. time frame or? Um, yeah, it was definitely in my teenage years that he was like, uh, it was kind of a, a comic book dork. Like I loved Marvel, and I had a okay. good collection, and still kind of in <laughs> okay. uh, closet. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, he was just like, man, you really need to, you really need to be involved in something. I don't care if it's swimming or cycling or running or whatever you can do. Don't watch TV. Get off the couch. Just you need to do something. Other people, it's a suggestion. You, your life depends on it. Like, it, it, not exaggerating. Your life depends on your exercising. It's, they were telling you to be active. Yeah, it wasn't like. Lay yeah. in the shade, and yeah. you know that was not the advice. The advice was right. get doing something. Yeah, get your heart rate up and okay. work out because the better that is, the better your your numbers and graphs, and okay. the story will continue. Okay. So All right. it was, you know, we had a we had a handful of come to Jesus meetings, and yeah, yeah, you know, and, and it just to me it was just kind of like, all right, sure, I'll I like that. So yeah, I mean at the time. It was like, do homework or go ride your bike. <laughs> well, if I'm going to die soon, <laughs> I'm not going to spend my homework last days doing useless. it. Exactly. I'm like, um, I don't need to know the volume of that silo. Time. Yeah, let's go ride bikes. So all the sun's going down. All right, well, I'll go do my homework now. But um, So when you, were, when you were 17, it sounds like things shifted quite a bit. Like, what was, yeah. what was that scenario and what happened? Yeah, cool. Thanks for asking. Um, yeah, I, I passed out, and I didn't know if it was because I was um, dehydrated or just didn't know what was going on. I was also having night terrors, and I'd wake up in the middle of the night just freaking out. And so um, we did an EKG, and I did a Holzer monitor for 24 hours, and then the results came back, and the doctor was like, man, your heart rate is really good. Your resting heart rate is, is about 28, oh, which is... Hell. Super low, way below the national average. I was like, "Well, that's good, isn't it?" And he's like, "It needs to be a balance. Like, yeah. zero is not ideal." <laughs> right. uh, and at that rate, I was going, I was heading towards that because he says, "Yeah, when you're sleeping, uh, from the original scar tissue of the surgery, there's an electronic pulse from your brain that's being sent, and there's scar tissue that's growing over that. It's it's intercepting that message. So let's say your heart." gets intercepted one of those beats, that could be up to four seconds that your heart's not beating. There's a good chance that it stops for four seconds, it might not start again. Okay. We're facing that. Like, this is a reality. So and You had so many times, it was just like, really crappy news was delivered to you, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's, that's another, like, pretty intense thing to, like, lay down at night, like, with that yeah. conversation rolling through your head. Yeah, when I got... When I originally got that first pacemaker when I was 17, holy cow, the first notice I ever had was how well I slept. Huh. It was just, 
I, the night terrors went away. Uh, I, I could sleep like a baby. Uh, it, was, it was really cool. It was exciting to like get a solid night to sleep and, and uh, not have to worry about well, good night. You know, I'll get to see you in the morning. And then yeah, it was just it was just such a different thing. That was, you know, they're all like, well, you'll notice this, this, and this. No, you don't. I slept well. That's what I noticed. Yeah, it was really cool. So, did you have? Was there any like stigma or? Or did you have any fears? Like the whole pacemaker thing, was it something that worried you? Or was it like something you were excited about? Like how did you kind of view it as a 17-year-old? Uh, yeah, obviously as a 17-year-old, you don't really have a full grasp of the world. You think you do. <laughs> but uh, uh, introspectively, I could look back and be like, yeah, I knew what I was doing. But you know, I didn't. Um, yeah, I was kind of freaked out. You know, I didn't want metal in me. Uh, to be dependent on a machine like do I need to plug in how does this thing work you know I had a thousand questions and uh, um, yeah some of the best and worst parts were with doctors and how their reactions were to it you know when they're talking about you know like a wood project hey, we're just gonna put a dado joint here and glue this and saw that open and it's like dude I'm not in a chest like, yeah um, can you <laughs> yeah talk about me like a person right. uh, or, you know, they'd just pull me aside, you know, I'm thinking of two particular that were just like, hey, let's talk reality here. Let's take the filters off and, and say what we see. And, you know, we're going to combat this the best we can. You're not alone. You've got friends and family. The physician and staff are here on your side. And we're going to battle this. And you're going to win. Because it's like, well, hell yeah, let's do it. And, awesome. You know, you had confidence with them. And, you know, seeing that they do this stuff and talk about it every day. Yeah. Yeah. They just, to them, me seeing how routine and calm they were about it really helps in regards to, like, hey, okay, this is what we do. Yeah. You know, yeah. Put in the wires. Yeah. I'm kind of falling asleep. Yeah. Monotone. And I was just like, cool. Yeah. You know what you're doing? Let's yeah. do it. You know, and then you'd meet the. The surgeons that were doing it, they're like, man, this is great to meet you. I, I've never <laughs> met anybody with your anatomy. I, this is my first time. And you're like, all right, look, can we can you get somebody else? Because uh, somebody else doing this, you know, because the heart's backwards and this and that. And so they put the leads in different places. But Yeah. Yeah. So, so you're 17, obviously, like, year, year and a half later, you go off to school. You told me you went to, yep. to Fort Lewis and Durango. Like, yep. Super renowned cycling school. Did you bit. choose to go there because of cycling? Uh, yes and no. Yeah, I went there for. Um, hey, what's up? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I went to uh, went to Fort Lewis for um, cycling, obviously. Okay. Um, yeah, one of my my best friend went there, and he was there. He was a year ahead of me, and was just like, dude, you gotta come right okay. back here. It's gonna be awesome. Uh, so I went and checked it out. Yeah, I was like, sweet, let's go ride bikes, and, and then maybe I'll get a degree on down here. <laughs> okay. But, um, did that answer the question? Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. I, and I just wanted to know, like, how much, like, get a grasp of how much, like, bikes were kind of, like, driving your decision-making of that kind of times in your life. Well, yeah, um, so, obviously, we've talked a little bit about how my life scale was truncated, uh -huh. to say the best, and, um, Growing through high school, I really didn't think about college, so uh, my grades semi-reflected that. So, in some regards, Fort Lewis is one of the only ones that let me. In. So, uh, it was a win-win, I'd say. Yeah, I mean, I was like, I'm going to die when I'm 20. What, what do I care about going to college? And I'm like, well, I'm still really healthy. Actually, I'm probably more healthy than the national average. Uh, you know, and I, I, I just raced uh, in, like a junior national championship and podium. To so it's like, whoa, actually, I, I think I'm healthy. I might I'm actually fast. live to see 25. This is crazy. Um, yeah, which was an interesting part. I don't know if you want me to say with the, the cardiologist. When I first met with him when I was a teenager, um, was just saying that there's no specialists for the anatomy you have because you know, supply and demand. There's no supply. We're not going to send somebody through med school in eight years and hundreds or thousands of dollars of schooling to study something that doesn't exist, which is you. Uh, so I'm just going to meet with a pediatric cardiologist the rest of my life, and I could be 24 walking in, and 
there's kids that are 20 years younger than me with tubes. And, um, wow. It was, it was a really humbling experience. You know, they hooked me up to the VO2 stuff, and uh -huh. now they're tapping each other, looking at numbers, and uh, keep going, keep going. I'm like, that sucks. And, you know, I'm like... But you just, like, knocked those tests out of the water, basically. Yeah, it really did. It was, it was, it was funny to see, you know, and, and see other people's numbers and where I was, and, how do I really correlate it? You know, was it the fitness or diet or sure. just dumb luck? I don't know, but I'm just gonna keep running with it. So, wow. um, yeah. So that's how I ultimately came to Fort Lewis. Was that I applied, they let me in, I could ride bikes, they liked that, so uh, I did that. So you you told me before we started recording that like college and, and collegiate racing was just like some really special years for yeah. you. So uh, tell me a little bit more just kind of about like some of the highlights of that time and uh, and what you got to experience there. Yeah, cool, thanks. Um, go to Fort Lewis. Uh, there's my two cents in advertising. Okay. It'll probably be edited out. <laughs> uh, no, I love it, man. It was, it was the whole camaraderie and it, to me it really was what mountain biking the definition should be. Yeah. Um, Everyone there had homework, they are stressing out about a class, maybe a girlfriend that's driving them crazy, and their bike's barely working. And you meet on the top of this mountain, and they're like, we're gonna have a race. And you're, you're kind of sizing everybody up, and you're like, yeah, we're all on the same, we're all on the same bus, like, let's just have fun and enjoy it. And, you know, I mean, we took it seriously, sure. but, that, you know, it was from start to finish, we, we gave it everything we had, but at the finish line, you know, we, we took our gloves off and we grabbed a drink and hung out with each other. And, you know, we're probably still eating peanut butter jelly sandwiches at this point. Yeah. It was just, it was what mountain biking was to me. And, you, you know, you talk bikes, you talk parts, you talk school, you talk friends. And, yeah. and that's what it was. And, you know, maybe we had a different school, a different jersey, but the whole camaraderie of it was, was so welcoming. You know, I mean, that to me really solidified yeah I'm a mountain biker like I do this like, I like to ride bikes and have fun and then you know on the flip side you know in the summers I, I do the Norman Nationals or the USA Cycling and, you know what type of tires are those what pressure are you riding what cassette is that what you know da, 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 da. it's just like man I'm just here to ride yeah. if I do better than you I do if I don't I don't you know yeah. my ego isn't attached to this yeah. it, it's fun like I like winning sure like doing well, but uh. so so I mean, you've raced a lot. You've, you've ridden a ton. How do you do? You think about your heart issues. You think about your pacemaker. Like, is that stuff that's like daily thoughts that you have, or is it something that because you've been from a kid, it's just kind of like who Casey Norton is, and you just continue on without really a lot of thought of it. Yeah, good good perspective. When you're first asking me, like, do you think about it every day? I'm like, yeah, I want to redline that sucker every day. Like, I wake <laughs> up and I'm like, how am I going to max these batteries out? You know, I'm sure that, you know, I get after more I'm like, the pacemaker's probably like, oh, couldn't I have gone to someone else? Like, I have to beat all the time. This sucks. You know, I try to exhaust those things. Um, do I think about it? Yes and no. Um, do, I, do I use it as a crutch to, like, oh, I probably couldn't, I shouldn't do this? No, never. Like, I, I countless times have failed trying to do intervals and sets and can't keep up with the group and haven't been embarrassed to like, hey, we're going on a group ride, it's a fast group. And, and you know, I, I'm no hero. Like, I was not at the front of the line. I was, <laughs> man, I'm the caboose and I should be thanking my friends for their patience of like, you know, zipper chest over here, holding up the caboose. <laughs> but yeah, they, they were great. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I remember, you know, freshman year, a friend was just saying, like, this is just amazing how how you're still competing and racing. And you're just a couple seconds slower than me, and I'm training my brains out, and you've got a heart defect. Like, you've got holes in your heart. That's metal your, in your chest. And, yeah, this is like, we're doing a drag race, and you've got a Kia, and I'm in this Corvette, and you're just right there. I don't know. Like, it was cool. Um, do I think about it? Yes. Do I use it as a crutch? I really try not to. Do you take 
do you take pride in your results and pride in yes. like, the lifestyle you've totally. got to lead? Yeah, yeah, and both sides of it. Like, it really, to me, is a win-win. Uh, like I said, I compared myself to IKEA, and you know, someone shows up in this twelve-cylinder uh, vehicle and totally annihilates IKEA. And it's like, oh, well, <laughs> we ain't gonna brag about that too. Like, hey, beat up on this guy. <laughs> Why are you telling me? Versus if IKEA wins, man, he got beat by IKEA. Like, that's pretty funny. Um, so tell me the uh, tell me the story with your nickname. In, in huh. College. Yeah, um, it was it was zipper chest because you know you're changing, you're getting into your gear, and uh, you know I've got the full zipper and a little side pocket up here too. Uh -huh. And um, some of the guys are like, "Man, you should get a tattoo of a big zipper. You got zipper chest." And <laughs> so they just started calling me zipper chest, and then just short to zip or zipper. And uh, a couple pair of shorts I had, I had zipper on the butt. So, Has it kind of stuck? Do, you, do yeah. people call you the zipper they still? Kind of, yeah, still to this day. Some people that I know from racing, they're like, hey, Zip, how you doing? And yeah, I, I raced uh, 2014 national championships. And uh, people are still calling me Zip. You know, I don't even know if they know my first name, which is fine. <laughs> they just call me Zip. That's like, rad. Did you get that nickname because you're fast or you're zippy? Like, no, it's, <laughs> I'm not fast. I'm not zippy. I have a zipper chest. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I probably would have got a tattoo of it, but the pacemaker with all the wires, they're like, eh, don't, yeah, don't probably, mess with that. So probably like, good to go there. All right. I'll just have the nickname. Nice. <laughs> nice. So um, you you work at a bike shop. You're in Colorado Springs as like a, you know, like Pretty a very active. active bicycle racing and mountain bike community. Yep. Like you're 33 now, you told me. And, you know, you've been told at various times you're not going to see this, you're not going to see that. What, what's the outlook right now? Like, what are people, what are doctors saying, and what, how do you want to, you know, knowing that, knowing everything you've been through and what the current outlook is, like, where do bikes factor into that, and, and like, what do you want from cycling? I know there's yeah. a lot. There, yeah, I was but, just gonna say, there's a lot of questions. Like, can we go back <laughs> and I'll tell you one by one. Uh, yeah, I mean, what do the doctors say? I mean, uh, again, like I said, I'm kind of a pioneer uh, for, for the anatomy that I have. Um, I think it'd be cool to be a spokesperson of other people with other congenitive heart disease or onset heart disease, you know? Uh, I just remember growing up and the doctors telling me what a can can't do, and my little ADD boy didn't listen, and I did whatever I wanted, and proved a lot of them wrong. And it, that, to me, is one of the biggest accomplishments, more than any medal on my chest, well, in my chest, was like, I'm gonna do what I want, irrelevant of what you're telling me. And just took it from there, and just was like, oh, what are my limits? Well, I'm gonna test them and find that out. And then kind of broke those doors down, and I was just like, dang, if I did that, what else could I do? And, and um, I mean, to people that are older or younger than me, I mean, don't listen. Uh, to their limits. You test your own and find where you're at. Obviously, you got to be healthy about that. You know, you don't want to be like, yeah. I'm going to go do something stupid. Well, yeah. no. Stupid with the reason. Yeah, stupid, stupid. Um, but, you know, if, if they're like, hey, you probably shouldn't go up and down the stairs, do it. You know, like, why not? You know, I'm going to pass out. Yeah. We'll find out. I mean, yeah, I've passed out to the gym before. I've passed out a handful of times because, but at least I know my limits. You know, it's cool to, you know, yeah. knock yourself out. And you're like, yeah, that's that's why. Okay, found it. Yep, I can go right to 9.9 .9 of 10 and not pass out. It's gonna hurt, but um, yeah, I, I, to me, that's my biggest pride. That's my biggest badge that I wear. It's just being like, I didn't listen to them. And, um, you, you know, it wasn't like I'm gonna draw a line on the sand and we're enemies. It's Hey, yeah. let, let's break these lines together, sure. and they really helped me, you know, doing VO2 tests and uh, getting me on the right medication to help regulate my heartbeat, keep me alive. And, and he said, "Where do you see it going?" You know, I, I really hope I can break some numbers. And, and again, every time I walk into the hospital and see the other people that are in my bracket or have similar anatomy, uh, I, again, I feel really fortunate to see the things I've seen. And, 
basement, like, man, I feel fortunate to go up and downstairs and check the mail outside some days. Yeah. And you're uh, racing at national championships and, and national caliber events. I did. Like this last um, summer, you, you raced the downhill national championships, am I correct? I did, yeah. Oh, where was that at? Need to fire New Mexico. And uh, how, how did it go for you? It went well. I got pretty lucky. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yeah. I uh, ended up getting third on the podium. On the podium. And cat one. Awesome. Yeah, it was all right. Wow. It was it was good. I, I'm really you just fortunate. felt like you put together a really good run, or how did it unfold? Yeah, yeah, a little bit of both. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of kids from California that had been on their bikes like all winter, and you know the race, if I remember right, was like really early in the season. So that's right. I just had a couple, it's like June. Or yeah, like early yeah, June. Was, yeah. So I just had like maybe a couple weeks on the bike, and I was just kind of like, all right, sure, we'll see what she's got, and. Um, yeah, and there's definitely been times where at a race, the fastest person doesn't win. You know, maybe you need yeah. to help Fox like we all go. Yeah, and um, it was a really technical course. It's the old 2005 World Cup track. Okay. Yeah, it was fun. But is there uh, is there a kind of downhill track that you like? It's kind of like, oh, this is my stuff right there. <laughs> Something that's not cardio. Yeah, <laughs> something steep. Something <laughs> steep and gnarly. Yeah, the steeper the gnarlier the better. Yeah, there's this. Uh, there's a track in uh, Angel. Or, I'm sorry, in Fire was good. Um, Deer Valley, Utah. That was really gnarly and technical. And okay. you know, you're just kind of holding on the brakes and skidding down the whole way, and, and ended up getting on the podium there again. That's Colorado Springs type riding. Yeah, it? totally. Yeah, I was just like, man, the steeper the gnarlier. I'm, you know, over 200 pounds. And, Little guys that are 140, 150 can't hold on like I can. So it's, it's you're like the Steve Pete of Colorado. I would compare myself <laughs> to him, but uh, yeah, yeah. I, if it's ugly and nasty, I'll I'll do well, nice. just because I'm not dependent on my heart, uh, dependent on my skills, uh, like everybody. But yeah, I mean it's an equal playing field. You know, it's it's a race A to B, and you know maybe I've got. Outskilled some people, maybe I uh, outfitnessed maybe a small fraction of them, but you know, maybe we all have our own advantages and disadvantages. You know, over six feet tall, I've got a lot of suspension right in here, so those other little guys are getting bucked around, and I'm just saddling up. Yeah, it feels good. Yeah. Uh, Casey, it's awesome stuff, man, and I, uh, I I love what you said about you know having. A metal that's that's in your chest and yeah. like always there and uh, and that's a pretty rad thought and a really cool sentiment. So cool. Uh, I thank you a ton for for oh, sharing with you. us and uh, and supporting Tour to Heart and uh, it's been really cool. Thanks. Yeah. A ton. Let me know if I can do more. Right on. Thank you. Thanks, Steve.